Comet is an initiative from the EEC in continuing education in technology. It aims to improve the effectiveness of the higher educational system in this field. Comet's target group is primarily technical staff of small and medium-sized enterprises. The idea is to bring together technical education, research, development and industry in Europe in order to exchange experiences and ideas. The INSIGHT project is a part of the Comet program. Our project aims to train the personnel of small and medium-sized enterprises to take advantage of new methods and techniques in electronics design. While it is simple enough in concept, the project is actually an ambitious attempt to take trainees through the entire process of developing custom electronics systems. The practically oriented courses offer hands-on experience to engineers from small and medium-sized companies. The courses basically deal with two general topics, top-down design methods based on hardware description languages and testing theory and practice. The eight 40-hour course modules have been designed by groups at Kongsberg College of Engineering, the University of Oslo and here at Watt University in Edinburgh. We have also received very valuable help in developing course material from Sintef SI Research Institute in Oslo, and from two partners in Portugal, INESC and R&D Institute, and the Technic Consulting Company. All the parts of the course have been run as pilot training courses before they are frozen and written up in their final form. In fact, we have already run no less than 11 courses in the three partner countries. These are offered at very low cost to the participants, since we feel that we cannot charge a full fee for pilot courses. Developing courses for experienced graduates and engineers is actually more of a challenge than setting up studies for undergraduates, because people with industrial experience are quite rightly more critical as to the relevance of the material they are offered. It is likely that one or perhaps two of the courses will be published by the Macro Hill Book Company in the United States of America. This says a good deal about the quality of the materials that have been developed within the framework of the INSIGHT project. INSIGHT has also managed to attract valuable sponsorship from industry. Four companies in the United States of America and one from Sweden have donated hardware and software to the project. And this has considerably lightened the burden or providing really up-to-date facilities for course participants. All the eight course modules are now finalized, tested out and used in full 40-hour pilot versions. Manuals, three videotapes and software for the courses are now available from Insight. The ASIC or application-specific integrated circuit is an important concept in modern electronics. A real-life sequence provided by Technic in Lisbon shows how ASIC benefits are discovered by a small company really feeling hampered by constraints of older technology. The conclusion is equally valid in any European country. ASICs provide a key to system integration. Thereby, they enhance performance and reliability and lead to decrease in power consumption and size. An ASIC is not always the right solution but if chosen when appropriate and designed with the right methodology, it reduces costs and reduces time to market. An ASIC also offers better protection of original ideas than those traditional solutions based on standard components interconnected in a surveyable way. The design of an ASIC is no longer the very demanding and expensive undertaking IC design used to be. Contrary to a common belief, even small companies today stand to benefit from advantages of ASICs. In fact, they can ill afford not to exploit these advantages. ASICs for SMEs is a focal point in several inside courses. Let's now go to Scotland to learn about the views on and methods of testing. The host will be our Scottish contact point 
Dr. James McLean. The video program is just a shortcut from a complete tape offered as part of the inside package. The video program accompanies and reinforces our two courses on test of systems and components. In the past, testing did not get the necessary attention. Designers tended to ignore test issues. Concerns about testing were relegated to a supposedly trivial phase, awaiting completion of the primary goal, a good design. Lack of interest in tests on the part of designers generally gave test engineers a hard time. However, ingenuity of test engineers often saved the day. Today, with ever-increasing complexity, the previous focus on design and neglect of tests has become an untenable procedure. In fact, if testability is not integrated into the very design process, a system or device almost certainly becomes untestable and hence unworthy of production. You should now be convinced that testability should be designed into a device or system. Also, tests should be carried out thoroughly and according to the right procedures. A clever and testable design does not suffice to guarantee a product with the right quality and the right time to market. Further requirements are illustrated in an inside tape produced by Professor Leif Halbo at Oslo University. Complexity and performance of modern electronics put very heavy demands on technology in terms of materials, components, and system carriers. Equally important are efficient production methods and facilities. The complete tape accompanies two inside courses. Most of the inside training material is concerned with technology in itself. In order to broaden the view, we will now pay a visit to a small Norwegian electronics company with considerable experience and expertise in developing high technology products for an international market. Small and medium-sized enterprises constitute a very important sector of European industry. It seems to be generally accepted that SMEs represent a main potential for further growth. I think we, there's one thing we must accept talking about small and medium-sized enterprises, and, and that is that the, the importance of good products. Good products is a must for survival, because uh, going out on the international market, you get no credit for being small, and you get no credit for being a Norwegian or a Dane or a Dutch. You compete on equal terms, and that means going out with professional products, you have to have real top products. To make a good product, and a good product, of course, is a product that the customers find has the right quality, the right price, and so on, and, and a good product also should have a lot of people wanting that product. Uh, that requires, uh, first of all, good contact with the market. Uh, the market tells you what the product should be like. Then you need the right technology. And this is a, a clue because the small companies do not develop their own technology. They depend on getting this from outside. And uh, you, in Europe, we have quite a number of programs. And the aim of these programs is to transfer technology, develop and transfer technology. The problem is that these programs are very often designed uh, around the big companies. And very few of the small companies uh, have benefit, have benefit from these programs. We have the same problem in, in Norway. So in order to I see, make it possible to transfer the right technology, we must uh, arrange these programs in such a way that the small companies can take part in them. Let's assume it possible to rapidly transfer specific expertise to SMEs at an acceptable price. Any SME still faces the problem of reading the needs of the market. You need to develop uh, an international market contact because it's out there, you find the ideas to your products. The only way a small company like ours can do that is to team up with international sales organization. And I mean team up, not, uh, not just uh, hiring an agent to sell for you, that you must develop a context so that you have mutual trust and the international agent 
they supply, supply us with the ideas. They tell us that this and this regulation is coming up in this and this country, and they also say that uh, the competitor, this and so, is coming up with a new product. And it, they supply us with the information we need to make the products in right time. The best way uh, to support small and medium-sized company is to, to accept that the, whatever support we want to give must be tailored to that group of industry. That's exactly what they do in Germany. They earmark uh, uh, the funds, uh, to a certain extent, to a group of, of companies. For instance, the companies less than 500 employees. And that goes for all sort of support you want to give. You should tailor it to, the, to this group of industry. The NFT Ericsson company has significant expertise in producing high technology communication systems for defense purposes. These defense systems represent a highly competitive and export-oriented market. The philosophy of concurrent engineering is also important in this company's strive to meet market requirements. Uh, concurrent engineering is a uh, systematic approach to the integrated concurrent design of products and their related processes. Uh, it includes everything from um, uh, the birth of a concept until the uh, the product has been shipped off to a customer and it's also it also includes support post sales um, this means that all the entire company will be involved in or is grasped within the concurrent engineering framework uh, the main main issue in concurrent engineering is time to market how can you in a safe way uh, develop products with maximum security, with maximum uh, customer requirements, focus, uh, and meet uh, time to market with the correct product. Uh, concurrent engineering um, points that this is a, an engineering discipline. And traditionally, most engineers have been interested in this, but in in, in fact, it's more a management discipline than anything else because most of the concurrent engineering philosophy uh, handles things like organization, the, the integration of the various disciplines in organized teams. You want marketing, product development, industrialization, production, test, etc. to be integrated into one common process. The only one that can do this is the company's management, and also n not just management, but top-level management. Uh, and also to implement a, a uh, sound and effective concurrent engineering philosophy requires funding. It's expensive. You need tools, you need uh, training, and a lot of things that, that will cost you money up front. And the only ones that can put this money up front is management. So if they don't understand, you will not be able to create the, the uh, effective or the, the, the required infrastructure. You will not have the required level of competence within your, uh, within your, your staff, etc. So it's very important that management is involved. And that's the main problem, because they're not. NFT Ericsson put a lot of effort into research and development. Computer-aided engineering tools increases integration and reduces lead time and total development costs. The R&D world consists of a different engineering disciplines with a different interface, which our engineering have to, to handle. This uh, requires highly educated engineers and integrated CIA computer-aided engineering tools. And if the Ericsson has almost integrated CIA tools, the tools are automatic interface between most of the disciplines. The bottleneck is uh, there is no automatic interface between the specification and the implementation. SMEs lack both human and financial resources in a field where new techniques continually emerge. EKF aims at reading these difficulties. EKF, electronics industry design forum, is a forum under the protection of the Federation of Norwegian Electronics Companies. 
The companies developing electronic systems use common methods, equipment, and process. These are at least sensitive areas among competitive companies. The fora are founded on the concept of cooperation on broad basis. Today, this covers area of development as design, components, testing, and production. More than about 90 companies and institutes take part in the cooperative activities. Approximately 250 industry representatives are engaged yearly in the activities of the forum. The results are electronic news called uh, ECAF Info, technical reports and uh, seminars. Evaluation of tools which can break the bottleneck between specification and implementation has just started in Fora. Several of the Comet Project Insight course deliveries came about through contacts established within the framework of EKF. Technology and tools are important for SMEs. However, these factors are only means and not a goal in themselves. Technology alone does not secure the survival of an SME. But what is uh, the most important condition for an SME to stay alive? Mr. Olaf Stavik puts it this way. I very often stress this uh, importance of bringing the products early because as a small company, uh, you actually you, you are not competing on equal terms, obviously, because uh, if if a big company, well-known international company, comes with a product and we come with one that's exactly the same, then we are the loser. But if you can come before and you can establish a market in front of the competitors, then you have a good chance of, of taking a fair part of the market. The achievements of Insight are not an end in themselves. They represent a first step towards university enterprise cooperation that should go beyond any project.